If you want to solve the Rubik's Cube in less than 30 seconds, it's not too much about how much knowledge you have, but more about applying what you already know in the best way possible. Although there are a few prerequisites before we get to the 10 tips. First of all, you need to know the basics of the CFOP method. Now, I have an entire playlist that goes over how to solve the cross, the first two layers, and then OLL and PLL. But the tips in this video apply to whatever level you are using the CFOP method. Secondly, you need to know some basic finger tricks, which means wrist turns for R or L moves, index finger turns for the U layer, thumb for F moves, and then ring finger for D moves. But most importantly, R U turns like this and L U turns like that. And then lastly, once again, you cannot be sub 30 using a cube like this. So it is really time right now to get yourself a speed cube. You can get any sort of speed cube starting from $8. But whatever speed cube you buy, make sure to go to thecubicle.com and use discount code CUPED for a huge discount. Thank you so much. Now using the CFOP method, I suggest aiming for these splits, which are 4 seconds for the cross, 16 seconds for F2L well, or 4 seconds for each pair, and then a total of 10 seconds for the last layer. Try to plan as much of your cross as possible. Even during competitions, you have 15 seconds of inspection time, so use those seconds really well. You're only solving four pieces, and the main goal here is to just know what you're gonna do before you actually do it. So whenever you start to do a cross, let's first look at where the pieces currently are, which are here, here, here and here and then try to visualize yourself solving it so i know this green piece is solved so let's hold that one at the back so we have an overview of all the remaining cross pieces and where we need to solve them i know i can insert the red one just by one turn then align the orange one which will put the blue one right here so finally after inserting the orange one i can just align the blue one and solve that one okay let's close our eyes And this is a way you can predict your entire cross. But even if you cannot predict the entire cross, you should always try to have an idea of where the pieces will end up. Develop muscle memory by doing a lot of solves. To understand muscle memory, try to think of typing on your phone. You don't think about how to place your fingers for each and every letter. You just do those things automatically because you've done them so many times. Now the same thing is true for cubing. If you've solved pairs a lot of times and with that I mean at least having done like multiple solves, you automatically do stuff and you don't really think about it because you've done it so many times. And this is because your subconscious mind is way faster than your conscious mind. Once you don't have to think about stuff and automatically do them, you can solve pieces way faster. Now I'll plug a video at the end of this video which goes in more detail but the fastest way to develop muscle memory is to first understand what you're really doing. For example if we're solving these two pieces right here I know I have to put the corner right here so I can hide it and move this edge over to create a pair. Even if you do the movements and do not understand what you're doing, it will be harder for you to develop muscle memories. But if you really understand what you're doing and understand what the goal is and how to achieve it, building muscle memory will be way easier. Avoid doing filler moves. And I wish I knew this tip way earlier because I still do them, but it's really good to stop doing them early on. Now, what are filler moves? So essentially any move you do that doesn't really have any benefit except for looking around and tracking pieces, those are filler moves. For example, if I'm at this position and I cannot really find the pair right away, doing a U right now or doing a U prime is a filler move. Doing this is a filler move. And even just doing a sexy move to just move pieces around to hope, hopefully see more pieces is a filler move. So we don't wanna do those things. Instead, if you're at this position, and your cross is solved first look at what you can see i can see this edge right here and i can see this corner right here so just by doing this and just looking around a bit i already found two pieces without having to do any filler moves know how to do easy inserts from the back even further down your cubing career, you will always try to set up to easier cases like this one right here. And you'll start to understand that you do not always want to solve into the front right like we've been doing so far. So this is the perfect time to try to understand how to do these easy inserts from the back. So R, U, R prime, like this one right here, we can do from this side as well by doing L, U, L prime. Now these are the exact same moves but just from the other side so try to visualize what you're doing again. So we bring the corner to the edge and we can slide it in the slot and then realign the cross like that. Let's try to do the same for this pair right here. So normally we would put it on the side and then insert it. Try to visualize what you're doing from the back right now. So we bring it to that side, open its slot, insert the pair and then close the slot again. 
And you should be able to do the same stuff from the other side. So if I use my left hand for this side right here, I would use my right hand for this side right here. And the last example, this three mover like that, we would do using the right hand just like that. If I were building F2L and a pair like this shows up, instead of doing this and then inserting the pair in the front like that, try to do it from the back. Because I know that blue and orange is in the back left right here, I can insert it just like that. If you start doing it, initially it's gonna be pretty difficult, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. Intuitively set up or preserve pairs. For example, right here, if you wanna solve these two pieces, in my video I said to put the corner this side and then do R, U, R prime, which gives us these two pieces right here. But if you go back, there's already a pair formed. But once I do this, I break up the pair. So the question now becomes, how do I take out this pair without ruining both pieces? If I would just do an R move, the pair is put in the front layer like this, but, but I wanna realign the cross. So if I just do a U prime and move the pair out of the way, I can close the cross again. And this pair right now is put into the top layer, which we can just insert from the back this time, just like that. Whenever you see something that you think, hmm, maybe I can work with this, try to do so. For example, right here, this piece and this piece right here. To get them both into the top layer separate, I told you to move the edge right here and then do R, U, R prime, which gives us this pair right here. But instead I can notice something. If I just do an R move, orange goes into the top. So if the edge would be right here, we would actually form a pair. So doing that again, but putting the edge right here, if I now do R, U, R prime, we actually put the pair into the top layer right away. If you can notice stuff like this yourself, that's really impressive and that can really help you shave off some seconds from your solving time. Master your last layer algorithms. If I see headlights right now, I know I have to do a T-perm. Now, initially, we probably had to think about it like, okay, doing a sexy move, doing a sledgehammer, then keeping track of the pair right here. But you don't wanna do this sort of thinking at all. If I say do a T-perm, you'll be like, okay, and do a T-perm just like that. What I sometimes do by myself, and I also advise you to do whenever you're chilling to develop better muscle memory for algorithms, is to just have a solved cube and do a bunch of algorithms. So for example, let me do two T-perms right now. Bam, cube is solved again. Let's try to do that faster. But just doing this won't be enough because you also want to train yourself to see headlights and then do a T-perm. So this is also called the recall of the algorithm. But the only way to get to that point is just to do a lot of solves. So you create a lot of opportunities of having to train muscle memory and recalling the algorithm. Know which cases you are solving. You might have noticed this yourself during solves, but whenever you get a T-shaped OLL like here and you have headlights right there, if you do the line algorithm from this side, so F, sexy F prime, you would build OLL in one step. For the hook case right here, we wanna get this B shape right here with a full line like that. If we then do the algorithm, we would get OLL in one step. For the dot case, we wanna have a full line right here, a line here and a line here. If we then hold the full line to the left and do our algorithm, which is F sexy F prime into this hook case, we would do OLL in one step and then onto a T-perm. If you have headlights right here and you have a bar here as well as here, so two bars opposite of each other. If we have this case and we do a T-perm, we would solve PLL in one step. And then finally, if you do not have any headlights, but you have a bar here and here, hold one bar in the front and one to the right. And if we then do a Y-perm, we did PLL in one step. Next up, I'm gonna show you two more OLL cases that you actually already know because you know the Y-perm. The first one is here. So we have a T right now, but instead of headlights right here, we have a bar here and here. If you have that, hold the T just like this, do a sexy move and a sledge. This solves OLL in one step. And the reason I said that you actually already know this algorithm because this is the end part of a Y perm. But the next OLL I'm showing you, which is when you have a square right here, a dot right here and a bar here plus here, you hold it just like this with a bar in the front and a bar to the right. And now you can just do the beginning part of the Y perm, which goes like this, which solves OLL in one step. And then the last tip for the last layer is to also avoid doing filler moves right here. For example, if we get to PLL right now and I wanna look for headlights, don't start doing stuff like this and then, oh, here they are, and then put them to the left like that and then do the algorithm, then start doing this. By doing this, you'll just waste a lot of moves and also you'll create really bad habits. Practice by using a cube timer. 
And this is the first time I actually get to announce something pretty exciting, but I'm actually working on my own timer together with a little team. And I will announce more of that really soon. It's gonna be super exciting, guys. But in the meantime, you can use timers like CS Timer or Cube Desk, which I both really like. And the benefit of that is, first of all, you get a scramble. So you get to practice cube notation and you also have legit scrambles that you can try to do again later if you wanna analyze some of the mistakes you made or just wanna redo a really interesting scramble. Secondly, you'll get to keep an over view of your times so whenever you start improving you can kind of see the curve go down and you'll be like oh i'm getting faster and faster once you can understand all of the tips in this video maybe it's time to get to the intermediate cfop course where we will learn the optimal way to solve the cross and f 2 l pairs and we will learn alex for each ol and pll case as well cover some more speed cubing fundamentals i'm really excited to be your mentor on this journey and i'll see you soon